All right, so now that we have our bread baked, and if you don't, if you're seeing this and haven't seen the video on how to do this, I will link it in the description below. Go and watch that one first and then come back. So, for those of you that have your barrette base already baked, you are going to need a little bit more Twinkle Twinkle, rolled out to a number one, that's the thickest setting on my machine, some silver rolled out to a number six, some scrap clay that I had, it's almost white, it's more of like a flesh tone color, and I just mixed a little bit of the silver in it to kind of make it that frosted glass color that the TARDIS windows are, and that's what that is for. Some black that I'm going to roll out thinner than this for the uh, lines around the window panes, and then you're going to need some TARDIS blue, of course, and this is Primo Sculpey Navy Blue, also rolled out to a six uh, on the Sculpey clay conditioning machine. Okay, and then we're going to have a couple of my silicone tipped shapers. This one is a flat tip, and this one is kind of a wedge with a rounded back. Exacto blade, nail art tool, my favorite blade, and you're going to need some more bacon bond. So, what we're doing in this video is this all but the roses. So, let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to want to do is get your bacon bond. And here, let's set this here so that I have something to go by. Let's see, and you're going to lay down some of your bacon bond right here in the middle. And you're just going to push it around with your finger. You can use a toothpick if you'd rather doesn't bother me getting my hands dirty. Don't forget to do the edges here. And you can see how much easier this is being able to hold these ends because we pre-baked it. And now you're not smushing your clay all up and having to be super gentle and I kind of feel like it's worth the extra time if you bake on a regular basis or even if you don't because I don't know I kind of I tend to screw up a lot <laughs> so it's really nice to have this part where I don't have to worry about it so much because it's already done now what we're going to do is we're going to take our blue, see if I can get this situated where you guys can see it, and I'm just going to cut a clean edge right there, and try and get it about the right size. Another clean edge right there. Okay. Be careful when you're peeling that up if you're peeling it off a of glass because the clay will absolutely stretch. And I don't want to have to deal with too much excess, so I'm just going to cut this in half. Set that to the side for the rest of my TARDIS, and you're just gonna lay this down. You can do it um, kind of, oops, sorry there, 
You can do it kind of catty cornered there, like that, if you prefer your TARDIS to be on its side. I kind of like the way that I did the other one. And you're just going to gently push this down, trying to make sure that you don't get any air bubbles. Any large air bubbles, anyway. As we've already discussed, I am not a huge fan of having to be very exacting with what you do with the clay. And you're going to gently come around the corner pushing from the top around with your pressure so that any air bubbles around the edge get pushed out as well. Make sure that that's in there good. Now I know this looks kind of thin, but we are going to add more layers to it. So that's why the TARDIS blue needed to be a little thinner because you don't want you don't want it to be too far out there I don't know you ladies with long hair my hair can be really frizzy sometimes and it gets tangled around stuff and I'm not really a big fan of that so I try not to make the things that hang off too too bad okay now what I like to do is I like to start one side and then come back to the other because it seems like it deforms this edge if you don't do that. And then you just lay it flat against your base. Another good reason why having your base pre-baked is awesome. It makes so much of this process easier. There we go. And now we've got where our TARDIS is going to sit. Now we need to take our Twinkle Twinkle and let's see try and get all of it out of this one piece. That's the beauty of clay. You can kind of stretch it a little bit. If you're just a little unsure that you, if you're going to have enough, try and keep the edge that's going against the TARDIS nice and flat, though. And I'm just going to cut this in half. there's one of those screw-ups I was telling you about. My fingernails are getting too long. I keep taking chunks out of my clay. I don't know how people with super long nails do this. I would have little nail marks all over my clay if I had super long nails. So props to you guys if you are able to do that. I am not so talented. <laughs> So, we're just going to do the same thing with our bacon bond, going around the edges, try and make this as quick as I can so that the video is not super long. This side. And you don't want too much of this bacon bond because it can make your clay slide all over the place. And the last thing in the world that you want is for your clay 
to go moving around on you. So just make sure that you've got enough for it to adhere and be kind of tacky feeling. And that will be enough. Okay, now we're just going to butt this up right against and you can see how it kind of comes up over. That is going to help us keep the lines of our TARDIS straight a little later on. Try and get it centered. Now, on these edges to get a nice clean wrap around instead of it kind of mushing, what you do is you kind of do this little pull it back a little bit. I don't know if you can see that I'm doing that. Just kind of pulling it back and then I'm going to push it up against this edge right here. Same deal. Pull back a little bit, lay it down, and then straighten it out. And that kind of keeps it from uh, warping the shape that you've laid down with your TARDIS. Same deal as before, except for this time we're going around the corners. Just kind of try and get all the air out. Kind of pinch the corners together until they stay up. Okay. Trim now. I I'm not a very fast learner, so don't do what I'm doing and push your X-Acto blade against your skin, but that is what I do to get around that edge. You should not do that, especially if you are a younger person doing this. Don't do what I'm doing. And we're just going to round this out a little bit. And since we use Twinkle Twinkle on the back, it should, if we round it out and smooth it with some of our silicone shapers, blend right into the back. Okay. Press in the middle, pull back, and push back into the TARDIS. Pull it back, push down, and then press it into the TARDIS. And we're just going to do the same thing as on the other end. Try and get this one where I can see a little bit better this time. I know you probably can't, but I'm using, I was using this as a guide to kind of keep myself level there. It's kind of hard to show that behind the pile of clay, I know. And then we just round this. I don't know if you guys can hear my son in there playing. Huge Ninja Turtle fan. 
And that was the price I had to pay for having a relative quiet to make my videos that he had to be able to watch Ninja Turtles. Okay. Just clean this up a little bit more. got that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring over this piece of blue that I cut off of the TARDIS and we're going to make some strips to go on the side. And you want to be mindful of the size of these because you want to leave room for all these other details that we're going to put in. large one and then cut that one in half. The roses will hide a multitude of sins if you're not very good at um, straight lines working on a mat that has uh, measurements underneath can help with that as well. I'm going to take my flat shaper and just gently press down because blue, I don't know if it's just me, but blue seems to be another one of those colors that's just sort of really soft. I barely have to condition it to get it soft enough to work with. Um, it gets air bubbles in it really easily, that kind of thing. So I have to be really slow and gentle with my blue. Got an air bubble in there somehow. I hope you guys don't mind a little bit of silence. I don't want to be one of those people that just never stops talking on here. And again, to keep it from warping, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there, but I'm coming in and pushing inward. And it kind of helps attach these little strips to the first part of the TARDIS that we put on a little bit. Make some wind up looking like they were all one piece. Anything you can do to make your clay more secure is always a good thing. Now, at this point, you want to be very mindful also of which way your clip is facing. I made this mistake on the other one. I am right-handed, obviously, but I wound up making this one for a left-handed person, which is fine. It's just not quite as easy to get it in your hair because I wasn't paying attention when I started putting the details on the TARDIS. So, this is for a righty, so I need to turn it this way and leave it this way so that I won't make the same mistake again. 
All right, so we're gonna do the same exact thing for this center panel right here, except we're not going to cut it in half. We're gonna make it just a tiny bit thinner and we're just gonna lightly press a groove into it just to give ourselves an idea of where we're gonna put that detail on a little bit later. And we're gonna lay this down as much in the middle as we can. Again, remember to place it the way for whichever handed direction you are going for. If you're a lefty or a righty, just remember you need to be careful of that. It's easy to get yourself turned around. Okay. Same as we did for the first one, cut a strip and then try and get it cut in half so we get the same size, roundabouts. actually don't like the thickness of that. I think that's too thick for the top. So I am going to just take a little bit off of that. And use this one because I don't want to have to make my window panes too small. You want that detail to show up. And you're just going to lay it down very lightly so that you can still sort of shift it a little bit. Just use light pressure. Again, if you're using a soft clay, you don't need much to be able to uh, get this to do what you want. Okay. All right. You're just gonna continue doing that. In the interest of shortening the video, you're gonna do that same exact thing here, here, and here. I'm gonna do that off camera and come right back. All right, so we've got our strips on our TARDIS now, and I've gone ahead and cut out a little square, check and make sure that you are holding your barrette in the right way, and this will help you keep track of it from here on out, if I can get it straight on there. Got a 
lot of fingerprints right there I'm just not happy with. So I'm just taking with some very light pressure and sort of wiping those away with one of my silicone shapers. All right, now we're gonna take our window color that we did and try and figure out the size that we want. Curve it around like that. Not all the way, just enough to keep it out of your way. Do the same thing with. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm just lightly pushing my nail in where I want to cut. Push that around again. And this is really nice having it so thin because the thin stuff just seems to adhere so much better. When you finally push it down, I'm not sure why. When you don't want it to, it's sort of like Murphy's Law. If you've got a thin piece and you drop it, you can forget it. You're going to have to re-roll that. Or at least that's how it happens with me. We're going to trim off our window. from the back. Starting to look pretty good. Starting to look like a TARDIS. Alright, so now what we need is a little bit of our silver. And you can just wing this. Doesn't have to be anything specific. I'm just cutting off a little bit. I'm going to roll it into A little snake here. And try and get exactly the size door handle. Oop. It's very hard to see if you can if you guys can see that. It's a pretty small little piece and just round round the edges off a little bit and put that right here in the middle of this paint. You don't have to put a whole lot of detail into it because when we put our roses on there it's not that it won't matter but those extra details, like the roses, sort of give your eye other things to fall on. And if you give your eye something else to focus on, it will nine times out of ten create the entire picture without you having to do a whole lot of work, which is nice. Okay, and now we're going to take just a little tiny bit 
and roll it into a ball for the lock. And the lock goes right here. That's still too much. So I am going to cut that in half. Reshape it. Okay. Just place it right there. Take your flat tool, whatever you're using, your finger would work just fine too. And just press evenly until it makes a circle. Little dot in the middle and then come back and sort of move the edges in a little bit and that makes it look like a keyhole. Okay, now what I like to do is use this as you just saw with the silver. It kind of, I'm horrible at making even snakes of clay. <laughs> I always wind up getting little lumps in them. So what I figured out was that you can take, this is just a little acrylic square from Sculpey. It came in one of those beginner kits. I got it when I first started working with clay. And you just very lightly use it to give yourself an even snake of clay. And this has saved me from having to get an extruder because I'm able to get very even, very small pieces of clay with just my hands. So what you're going to do is you're going to take, try really hard not to mess up your details around the front. You're going to start at one corner of your pane and just gently press it down around the edges. Just make sure that that comes in good contact with the edge. Trim the excess. And we're going to come back and do two lines. Oop. Because there are six rectangular panes of glass. Boy, that one just does not want to lay down on there, does it? There we go. Again, here is a place where your silicone tip tools come in very handy. You certainly don't have to have them, but they make fine details like this very easy. And I'm just trying to get that relatively straight before I put light pressure to sort of secure it. I think that is too short to keep going, so I'm going to just pick up another piece. as I can. Which is much harder to do with a camera between my arms here. 
than it was to do the original. But there we go. Done with that. And then you're just going to do the same thing to the other side. What I like to do is bring it in and just sort of flatten it out. So it doesn't look like it's a snake of clay that you laid down. Take my wedge, my wedge one, and do the same thing around the edges so that it winds up looking like it is actually a border around instead of a snake of clay covering up the edges. I know that's probably a small thing to change, but I kind of feel like it. It helps with the aesthetic of it. It makes it look more like a panes of glass. All right, so I'm gonna hold off on that to save time. I'll do the other black snake um, off camera because I think we are gonna have to make the roses a different video. Now with the other one, I don't know if anyone has seen uh, the episode where the TARDIS gets put into a woman's body. It's one of my favorites where he actually gets to talk to the TARDIS and one of her complaints is that in 900 years he has never read the instructions on how to open her doors because he always pushes when the instructions say to pull. And I think I might have started that a little bit too far over. Let's see if I can fix that. Do it a little bit deeper there. And I'm just doing dots. Because I can always cover that over with a vine, which is exactly what I'm going to do. But you Whovians will know what's under there. Okay. So, pull to open. And I'll just put a rose or a vine right across that, and you won't even, your mind will just say that that says pull and you won't think twice about it and then you take and just do some squiggles underneath I'm going to use the ball side for that hmm My clay is getting kind of warm. The reason I'm doing these little squiggles is because I'm going to put a little bit of either brown or black acrylic paint on when it's baked and that will make it look like writing. Alright, so with that, I'm going to, again, like I said, I'm going to do the other window off camera to save time. But that is how you do the TARDIS portion. And in the next video, we will do these vines and these roses because the episodes with rose are some of my most favorite. So I thought that that would be a lovely thing to do. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you for the next part. Bye.